Hey, welcome to another episode of Happiness Matters, the show where our guests share their stories and insights to inspire you, encourage you, motivate you, and more so you can get you happy on. I'm your host, Beanie Mann, and my wonderful co-host, Mother Service Dog, who is sleeping out in the hallway, and hopefully he stays there. Otherwise, you'll hear him whining and coming in, which is fine too. We love him. He's awesome. And uh, we're brought to you by Mupo TV. And make sure you stay tuned every Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern for a new episode. And you can also catch past episodes and many other shows on mupotv.com. That is www.mupotv.com. So today, another special treat. Yay, I'm so excited. It is my absolute honor, pleasure, and oh, my happy to introduce to you my bestie, Linda Clark. Hi, Linda. I'm so glad Hi, you're here. Hi, Miss B. How are you? I am awesome. I'm so excited you're here with us today. I'm excited to be here. It's always this is so gonna much be a fun. And it's going to be awesome fun. And this, is, yes. this show is going to be a little bit different probably. I mean, the concept is the same, but the message might be a little bit different today than what, what we're used to because Linda has a very special gift. So why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you? Sure. Um, thanks for having me on today, Beanie. My pleasure. Um, my name, as Beanie said, is Linda Clark. My business is called Heartbeats of Love 2019. So I am a shamanic practitioner, psychic medium, animal communicator. And all of those gifts kind of fall under one umbrella and allows me to do um past life journeys, soul retrievals. I helped Mo compose his book. Yes, you did. Yes. And um, um, help people um, with departed loved ones. And that's kind of what I do. And I love it. It is fabulous at it. it, it it's thank you. It is a definite as you would say, growth opportunity, <laughs> always growing, different things happening. And so it's very exciting for me. I, I absolutely love that. And uh, just for our audience, because not everybody might understand what a shaman or shamanic pract practice is. Would you explain that? Okay, sure. Shamanic practitioner believes, and it originated, uh, never really originated from the indigenous people, per se, but they're also known as medicine men, medicine women, um, an elder in a tribe. The indigenous people, Native American folks have these people within their um, tribes. I love that. So and, go ahead. And what happens is we utilize the collective energy of all things, which include trees and rocks and rivers, and you know, it's all energy mm -hmm. and it's all collective energy. And we're able to, I don't want to say manipulate, but we're able to cross realms and do things that a lot of folks aren't able to do in connecting the realms and the energy together. Mm -hmm. No, I love that. And, and you certainly has helped me uh, with a few things that were <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. just simply mind blowing and everything. But um, no, I, I absolutely love that. And I know um, you mentioned that you helped uh, bring Mo's book to life because at one point Mo decided it was time for him to write his book and get his, his story out because he has a purpose. And uh, it was fun when you came over and we were sitting here in this small little space, the, the three of us, yes, really. Yes. <laughs> yes. We were all and, scrunched. It's a good thing we love each other. We were all scrunched together. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it was so funny because it's like, so you actually, in, in order to communicate with animals, so you are what we would know as an interpreter, a translator. Um, you know, some people do the sign language thing, you know, others do from one language to another. You simply do it from, I call it animal speak, <laughs> to okay. human speak so we can understand it. And with okay. your help, we were able to write Mo's book, which we pretty much recorded and then transcribed it, more or less. Yes, 
yes. And, you know, Mo is very easy to communicate with. He is very opinionated. He has yes, thoughts he on all sorts of things. <laughs> um, and, you know, he was the one that ferreted me out originally. Mm -hmm. And he feels that all dogs have a purpose in all of our lives. And that was a message he desperately wanted to share. And that includes service dogs. And that includes non-service dogs. Right. I mean, any animal, it, really. Any animal. You know, I mean, my horse is a service horse. So <laughs> it is It is all, all animals in our lives have a very intricate, intertwined moment with us. I love that. It's so cool. Hey, guys, I want to take a really quick commercial break and we'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm your host, Beanie Man and Mo the Service Dog and our wonderful, awesome friend and guest, Linda Clark. And Linda has a special gift. And my question for you is, have you always had that gift? Have you always embraced that gift? And if not, what stopped you and what made you embrace it? Okay. So yes, I've had it. I remember going back to you know, like seven, six, seven years old, um, animals always flocked to me. So you're like Dr. Doolittle. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And, and so, you know, they were always in my life. I always had a special infinity with them. Mm -hmm. And I would dream things that would happen. Like what? Mm. Gosh, all sorts of things. Um, let me think back. If like premonition remember. type things, like having yes. visions of something that is, and then it happens after yes. you dressed it. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, and but I grew up in a very religious household, so my gifts were not really accepted, mm -hmm. encouraged. Um. And in essence, they were pushed down. Because they were perceived as evil? Yes, yes, evil. Right. Um, demonic. Not, yeah, demonic, not acceptable with normal society. Gotcha. And that went on for quite a long time. And I did the religious, I went to church, I tried different religions. And what was really amazing was I could hear angelic beings and some religions have saints. I could hear them talking Interesting. to me. So it never went totally away. It was there and I accepted the part because it was okay because they were angelic or saints. So they it was friendly. okay. They were friendly, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anything else was a taboo. Okay. okay. Um, in 20, well, before I moved to Colorado in 2005, I had met a lady who was a psychic and she was helping me develop 
my psychic gifts. And, you know, she had me talking to animals in England and Australia and all over the world. And I was like 97, 98% accurate. Now, is those animals that of, of people that you knew or is it random stranger? They were strangers to me. She knew who they were because mm -hmm. she had been working with them, okay. but I had no clue. So did you get a picture of that, of the animal then yes. or the name or both? Yeah, so at that time, she would give me a picture and a name of the animal. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, you know, I, I was just cultivating that gift, you know, developing that muscle. Okay. And so I, I did that for six months, eight months. Then I moved to Colorado into a very rural area. Yes, you did. <laughs> Very rural. <laughs> and I stopped again because I was concerned about the reactions that friends, community, people would have towards somebody like me with the gifts that I had. Mm -hmm. Makes sense to me. Okay. So I had gotten very good at um, ignoring my gifts. Mm -hmm. So in 2019, I met Mo. <laughs> Shy introverted Mo, like his mama. <laughs> and at that time, I was working in the financial industry. And I would go to different um, events, professional social events. Not working. Okay, networking, exactly. Right. And every time I'd go, there would be Mo going, hello, hello, <laughs> hi, let's talk. Who are you? And I'd be going, no, nah, not listening. Okay. <laughs> and this went on for a couple of months. And he kept. He's persistent, I isn't he? To talk. Hello, hello, over here. I'm Mo, I'm over here. Um, and I finally said, okay, he's not going to stop unless I talk to him, find out what he has to say, and then tell his owner. And at that point, you and I weren't friends yet. We were friendly because, no. and, you know, because we see each other, we say hello and everything. Exactly. But we weren't friends. No. No, we hardly knew each other. Right. Just brief acquaintances. Right. And so I talked to Mo. And Mo, of course, had a lot to say, as he always does. <laughs> Hence the book. <laughs> yes. And I set up a meeting with you and we got together um, at a little coffee shop. <laughs> and um, I came out of the closet. And boy, did you come out of the closet. <laughs> Came out of the spiritual closet. <laughs> it was, and it was so funny too, when, when, you, um, when you started the conversation, it, it was so cute. You said, um, so there's something I have to share with you. Yes. <laughs> and of course, you know, that piqued my curiosity. Right, right. And I'm sitting there going, okay. And you, you continued on and you said, so Mo was showing me things. And I freak out immediately. I was like, oh, man. I, know. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, my God, what is he showing? And, da, da, da. And, and right. So, guys, here's the thing. And this is one thing that Linda told me right out of the gate. Your animals will never rat you out. Unless you do True. physical harm to them, they will never rat you out. Correct. Okay. So it was like, <laughs> dodge that yes. bullet. <laughs> yes. Yes, she was very concerned, which I thought was rather intriguing. <laughs> well, we have no kids in the house. You know, yes. we're very happily married. That's yes. not said on that part. But anyway, and then you started sharing things that Mo showed you, and you couldn't possibly know that because up until that point, we never actually had a, a sit-down conversation where we were sharing personal things. Before, Correct. it was just business, hello, how are you, you know, blah, blah, blah. So... And you were sharing with me 
what Mo had showed you. And they were very obscure things. Well, for you. But they weren't, they weren't (laughs) common things like a television or a dog bed. Do you know what? They were very specific. Like blue bowls. Yes. I remember that. And at first I was like, and I thought you said balls. Yes. It's like, no, 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 bowls. And I know immediately what you were talking about. Yes. You know, yes. because those blue bowls, his dad and, and our first dog had those bowls for feeding. And Mo decided because he is the top dog, he's the only dog now, it's uh-huh. his right of passage to get these bowls. So now he's eating out of the blue bowls. Yes. So yes. it's all good. So we got to have a take a little quick commercial break. We'll be okay. right back. Welcome back. Your host here, Beanie Man and Mo the Service Dog and our awesome friend and um, animal communicator, psychic, and so much more, Linda Clark. And we were talking about when Linda, the day Linda came out of the closet. (laughs) I know, the spiritual (laughs) closet. closet. (laughs) And um, I remember when we were sitting at that coffee shop, we were sitting outside and I had just gotten my dream car that I've been drooling over for two years. And this is me, guys. I'm like, oh, you can communicate with animals. That means you can tap into other energies. Oh, growth opportunity. <laughs> yes. And she's been like that ever since I've known her. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at Linda and I said, oh, since you can communicate with animals, which is energy, everything is energy. So technically everything is alive. You can tap into my car and find out the name and gender. Yes. <laughs> and I never will forget. I was like, oh, uh oh. Well, hmm. I was quite taken aback. Um, But, you know, I was pretty game. I figured in for a dollar, in for a pound, you know, I was going to go for it. So, you know, and I got a name. Mm -hmm. um, But because of my own insecurities, (laughs) I just told you the letter it started with. Yep. Which was the name that you knew that you had been getting mm-hmm. was what and who it was. Right. You right. said, well, is it a male or a female? I said, it's a male energy. And you said, oh, that's what I thought. It's Sam. And I went, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's so cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was so and, awesome. <laughs> you know, she was always throwing me for these loop curves. <laughs> Gross opportunities. Yes. Yes. And one day we came out of a restaurant. Oh yeah. That was fun. In a parking lot. We're going out. And she says, you know, I've been having troubles in the car with the, the passenger seatbelt. Nobody's there. In the and it seat. kind of came on at random times. I mean, there was no yes. rhyme or reason. It just <laughs> came on. <laughs> I mean, any time of day, you know, whether sometimes it's like right after I'm, I started and left with the car or somewhere an hour later, I, it didn't matter. There was no rhyme or reason. <laughs> and so, of course, another growth opportunity from Beanie. She said, can you find out who's doing this? <laughs> and of course, I'm going, oh, yeah, okay. So I found out that it was a young man named Avi, and he had come with the car from wherever it was prior to you getting it. Mm -hmm. And he thought it was just great. Yeah. I mean, he was like, and it was so fun because that night after you gave me the name, I was like, this is cool. So I get in the car to drive home and, and, and I'm not even five minutes from the restaurant. Uh-huh. And I get in the car and I pull out the parking lot and the seatbelt sign comes on. There's nothing in the seat. <laughs> and the seatbelt sign comes on. And, and my reaction was like, oh, hi, Avi. I'm so glad you're here. It instantly stopped. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I got your number now, buddy. <laughs> yeah, he didn't last long after that. 
No, because he started throwing, I have a unicorn, because he's unicorns, you know, rainbow is a color, unicorns are real, so I'm all about sure. rainbows and unicorns, and I have, of course, unicorn is one of my power animals, so I have one in my car, and it was, uh, you know, one of those stuffed ones, and he started throwing it on the floor, and I was like, no, this is where the fun ends. Yep. I mean, I'm, I'm all fun in games, I said, but this is not fun, so I stopped being fun, he couldn't really get to me anymore, not that he really ever could. Right. You know? So he left and he's gone. I mean, my seatbelt right. sign has not come on, nothing. And it's just. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting. You know, the. We are so I don't want to say it sound insulting, but we're we are so oblivious mm -hmm. to the energy interactions that are always taking place around us well because we're conditioned to ignore it it's something bad yes yes you know which it's not no it's not i mean don't get me wrong guys not all energy interactions are good there yeah, are those there are negative. That are evil and everything and you need to protect yourself but in in most of them they're they're there they either have a message for you they're to help you you know guide you along and everything and uh it's really fun. <laughs> it is, you let it it. is because there, it's just really kind of, sometimes it's off the wall and it really catches you off guard. It's mm -hmm. like, whoa, okay. <laughs> Am I going crazy? Am I losing my mind? What the <laughs> hell is happening? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So of course I have the benefit. I can call in now. I'm like, Oh my God, you're not going to believe this <laughs> growth opportunity. <laughs> I know. She's always this telling me happened. this is a great growth opportunity. It's like, you know, I, I can't say the word. I don't want the growth opportunity sometimes. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, you know, things change. Um, I had always talked to animals and that was my focus. Heartbeats of Love 2019 was all about communicating with animals. And I remember you were adamant. That's animals. all you do. You will not talk to dead people, you will, yet they kept showing up. Dead people kept showing up. <laughs> um, my, oh, I know. my deity is Anubis, which is the god of the dead. And guys, here's the thing. So many people think they hear Anubis and they think it's evil. It's the devil. It is not. He is. It's not. Not at he all. Is so far from that. <laughs> so far from that. Um, so I, I am actively a part of an Egyptian pantheon. So Anubis is the father figure, Beset is the mother figure of the Pathion for me. And when Anubis showed up, lots of dead people started to show up. Did he show, did Anubis show up first or did the dead people show up first? He was starting to show. Mm -hmm. And I, I was trying to figure out who it was. It's not like he walks up with a placard card and says, hi, I'm Anubis. <laughs> it's like, what the fire truck? <laughs> <laughs> okay, he doesn't do that. Okay, look, Anubis, that's me. Because I didn't know who Anubis was. Right. Okay, so he would appear and I would see, you know, um, quick glimpses of him. Didn't know who it was. So I was reaching out to my witch friends saying, okay, this is what I got showing up. What is it? Who is it? And in the meantime, dead people were showing up. And I talked to a friend of mine who, shaman, where she can cross the realms like myself. And, you know, because I was scared to death. You know, based well, on I would my imagine, mood. I mean, it's like, what happened? Because I remember one of the, and I remember you calling me, it's like, oh my gosh, Beanie. You know, because uh, I think there was an accident on that main road over by the town where you lived in. Yeah. And that, yeah. that guy that had passed away, his spirit came to you for help. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't know at the time. All right. I know is I'm laying in bed and there's this black smoky cloud thing. Well, you know, my religious breath 
ground. You know, I'm <laughs> casting it out, telling it to leave. Right. And I talked to my shaman friend and she said, I'm going to see if I can reach out to this. And she said, it's a man and he died by your house on the road. And she said he was on a bicycle and he died and he doesn't understand what happened. Well, approximately a month before I had called you and said, I'm stuck in traffic. Somebody was riding their um, bike on the side of the highway mm -hmm. and got ran over. Yep. His bike fell into the traffic and he got ran over and they airlifted him out. Well, he had died. Hmm. So normally psychics have a 200 watt light to the deceased. Okay. So it's like, like the, that light for, for the bugs. They yeah. come. Okay. Yeah, they, come. <laughs> they come. Okay. <laughs> Because our, our purpose is to help them, mm -hmm. to assist them whether that's to help them cross over, whether that's to help them do what they need to do to leave, we're here to help them. So she called him and she talked to him and he was trying to figure out where to go, mm -hmm. where the light was. He didn't know, I was the only light he could see. So she helped him cross over and find his peace. And he's, he was gone. Wow. It was done. So, you know, out of ignorance on my part, I didn't know what was going on, but she helped educate me a little bit. We Good finally figured out. Now. <laughs> I know, I know. We finally figured out who Anubis was and he came storming into my life. And my life has changed. It right. has changed. And to feel so accepted and content within myself and not to doubt mm -hmm. what my purpose is, what my path is, is just so comforting. Oh, yeah. And I have to say, You know, from when I met you in the networking world and then, you know, our little get together at the coffee shop and, mm -hmm. and watching you grow and really step into and fully embrace your gift. It just makes my heart sing to to watch Thanks. you really blossom and go full steam ahead. And I love it when you call and it's like, get this. <laughs> <laughs> And then you learn something new or, or something or, you know, another energy came to show, you know, mm -hmm. come to you and everything. And I just love how much you have grown since you fully embraced your gift and really stepped into who you are, because this is who you are. Yes. You know, the, the, the other Linda, that the Linda that I met networking, it was part of you, but it wasn't you. It was what society had created me to be. Right, right. But it's like seeing you now in, in your full gift and everything. And it makes my heart sing. I'm so, so, so happy for you. Thank you. It's awesome. Thank you. You know, and we've both grown. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> and, and, you know, I've had lots of growth opportunities with Beanie. Oh, yeah. Oh, we can talk about it. Uh, a couple. Oh, it's was just fun. Hey, I'm going to take another quick commercial okay. break. We'll be Alrighty. right back.
Hey, welcome back. I'm your host, Beanie Man, and Mo the Service Dog, who I'm sure you're here barking in the background at something. Yes. And uh, our awesome friend, Linda Clark. And uh, uh, before the break, we mentioned like the growth opportunities with Beanie. Maybe that's another show, Growth Opportunities with Beanie. <laughs> yeah, we should do one just on the growth opportunities. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, because it definitely kept me on my toes. Uh, yeah. Well, the, the two of us. So one, one of them, first of all, I mean, journeying with Linda is amazing. I have to say, I mean, it's, it's, um, and I know one session we did together was shadow work and that was rough. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That was rough. It was yeah. extremely liberating and freeing and beautiful afterwards <laughs> going through it. It sucked. Okay. Let's just be honest. It really sucked. It was, it was awful. But um, what I love is one day we were talking and we, we had this, this mutual acquaintance and you happened to mention that you mentioned my name to her and her response was, and she didn't know me really, you know, no, her response she just was knew you like, by name. Right. And she, <laughs> she's also gifted. <laughs> and she said, oh, Beanie has an ET within her, an extraterrestrial. And of course, nerdy Beanie, she, I'm like, Oh, really? That is awesome. What is it? What does it do? Da, 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 da. Where does it come from? Blah, blah. You know, million questions. And Linda looks at me. She goes like, well, I don't know. This is just what she said. And I'm like, oh, we must explore. <laughs> Rough <Yes. opportunity. laughs> Yes. Yes. You did. <laughs> so I went over to Linda's in her sacred room. And I said, we need to journey. We need to find out what this ET is, where it's coming from, you know, because this is part of where I'm from. I mean, right now I'm, I'm this human and I'm in this human form. I mean, we are all spiritual beings having a physical experience, you know, but we came, our energy came from somewhere at some point. And our, our journey is as our soul is we're we're supposed to grow and learn and evolve. So of course, when I find out, because I'm a nerd, I mean, Star Wars, Star Trek, all of those things. Yes. I mean, computers, give it to me. I love it. So all finding out. cases, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> so when I find out I am part ET, oh, tell me more. I need to know. And if anybody can help me with that, it's my friend Linda who can communicate with energies. Makes sense, right? So I went to Linda and that was an interesting journey, wasn't it? You know, it was very interesting. <laughs> um, most of my journeys, the person I'm doing the journey for is involved in the journey. For example, when we did the shadow work journey, you were involved. Right. I walked you through the journey. This journey was different. Um, I will say Anubis is with me on all journeys. Mm -hmm. I have a bear totem, which is my bear. Okay. Bear is very earthbound and he's connected to earth's energy. So bear was there, Anubis was there. And I'm like, you know, Beanie, I have never done this. I, I have me either. No. <laughs> and she's like, it's a great opportunity. And I'm like, okay. So I started the journey with Bear and Anubis. And about halfway on the journey through the cosmos, Bear had to come back to Earth. He couldn't go any further. So Anubis went with me. And I remember, and, and most of the readings that I do, because the message is not mine, I don't remember anything if minimal bits and pieces. I remember some kind of essence, some kind of entity and it wasn't very nice and um 
of course, Anubis pushed me behind him and said to this entity, this essence, she is mine. And you will not talk to her like that. She is a messenger. And I kind of remember peeking around Anubis going, hello. <laughs> and he sent me. <laughs> and then the conversation proceeded from there with this essence entity and you recorded it. Mm -hmm. um, and the message was for you. Yes. And <clears throat> a lot of people when they do journeys, and there are other people out there, shamans, a lot of folks um, that are very gifted. Mm -hmm. The difference is when they don't have Anubis on all of the uh, journeys. And Anubis is a deity, he's a god. Okay. So he's got some pretty serious mojo <laughs> when he <Yep>. goes. <laughs> all right. And I did not learn shamanism or psychic mediumship from another person. I didn't have that. A lot of Native American, the indigenous people learn from their elders. It gets it's passed, passed down, right. Generation to generation. Um, some of the other religious, um, metaphysical religions out there, it's passed down and there's a specific way that everything is done. The journeys are done a certain way. You do a certain it's, ritual, it's a ritual right? before you do the journey. I've never done that because I didn't learn that way. I just would say to Anubis, well, so-and-so wants me to do this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go there. So I need you to follow me and help me. <laughs> Okay. Now you listen. <laughs> okay. Because I don't want to get lost. Okay. <laughs> and he's like, okay. So he taught me how to do the journeys. And the thing about the journeys is the majority of the journeys that I do with folks, you were with me. Mm -hmm. I don't go somewhere and just talk to you and relay messages. Right. You're with me on that journey to learn the things, to feel the emotions, and to work through the issues and events in your life that are holding you back. Right. And I have to say what I love about doing the, the journeys with you, like the shadow work, you know, and, and I mean, we've done a few together. Um, I mean, I didn't like it in the moment. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah. But what I really like about it is, is like, you are the guide. Yes. You're telling me like when, uh, when we did the shadow work and I was in the room. Right. It was, the room was pitch black. Yeah. And I was scared out of my mind. I mean, mm -hmm. it was scary, but I knew, and you kept telling me, it's like, find the door. You can find the door. Right. You didn't tell me where the door was. Uh -uh. You told me find the door. But I was so paralyzed with fear. I felt like I was cowering in a corner. But at the same time, I knew I had to find that door. Well, fortunately for me, one of my other power animals is a dragon. His name is Leviathan. And he did this little, little spit of fire. So I can have a little bit of light to help me find mm -hmm. that door. Mm -hmm. You know, so I found the door and I went and I had, of course, you know, I had to go through the door. And you tell me, you don't open the mm -hmm. door for me. You say, you know, mm -hmm. open the door. And it's scary. It is very, it was very scary because mm -hmm. I had no idea what to expect on the other side, you know? And then I opened the door and I saw, and it was like, that was scary. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it didn't stop. It's like, you open the door and then you're not scared anymore. No, you know, <laughs> but I mean, what I love what you do is, first of all, yeah, I had to do all the work. You guided me, but I also had that knowing that you were there with me. Right. So there's that sense of nothing can happen to me because I got Linda right there with me holding my hand when she might push me, you know, <laughs> but I knew you were right there. No. And I mean, to me, that is really, really awesome because I've, had, I've done readings before, you know, where sure. I do things, which it's nice to have that knowledge, you know, but it's like when you actually have to go through it and, and do the things and 
I know some of you are sitting here like, yeah, okay, whatever, you know? Right. Well, I mean, even though it, I wasn't moving in the chair that I was sitting in, in your room, my, my essence was moving. Right. You yes. know? So, I mean, I was doing all the things and everything. It's like, and my body was just in sitting in the chair, but the essence of me, my energy mm-hmm. was actually going and, and working through all of the past uh, life and experiences and everything that I had to go through, you know, and walking through that door. Right. You know, and, and I love your guidance too. It's like, so what do you see? You know, and then when I told you, it's like, there's this, this, like this sea of people, you know, and I was like, well, what do they look like? And I actually had to look at them and I realized they were all, every single one of them was me. Yeah. That was, that was scary. You know, because it was, no, I mean, it really was, but for me, yes, it was, yes. it was all, the, all the times where I had let myself down, well, I was not helping me, you know, and it's like, why did you let, and the question was, is like, why did you not help me? Why did you let me down? Why did you do this to me? Why did you do that to me? You know, and to having to face that. Yeah. And, and to really like, oh my gosh, I have let myself down so much. And then working through that forgiveness piece, that was huge. That was huge. Yeah, embracing, oh, hold on, excuse me. I, <laughs> you know, I have chihuahuas and they're definitely, it, it's all good. <laughs> but it's like that going through that, it's really nice to have somebody to help you and really kind of hold your hand as you're doing this. And I'm so glad that Linda does it that way. And uh, yes, it's scary, but it's a lot less scary. So you need to unmute yourself. <laughs> we can hear that's, you better when you're unmuted. <laughs> I know, Colleen, she got that, that. But that's when I draw upon the collective energy. Right. right. Mm-hmm. And I remember that another uh, journey that we did I think that kind of surprised you too, because the guy that came through, oh, maybe that was that journey. It it wasn't a whole bunch of of entities that actually showed up. It was the crown, the old crown that showed up to help. I think that was that one. I can't remember. You 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 remember, you have the raven and you have all kinds of things. But for this one, only the crone showed up, which is like the really old, old wise woman. You know, and I remember you telling me, it's like, well, that was a new one. <laughs> that was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they are, they're all very, very different. And again, part of a shaman's responsibility is to help heal collective community. The collective I think that's all of our responsibility is, is to help the collective. And I believe that by healing us and working on ourselves, we help the collective. Yeah. Yeah. I, I firmly yeah. believe that. Yeah. And, so and it's, it's, it just, it is so amazing and so life-changing to watch people reconnect with themselves. Mm -hmm. and to love themselves on that journey where they're able to work through the hurt the pain whatever it is and heal something that's never been healed and to become a whole person right that can say oh i love me Mm -hmm. Okay, I got this. Mm-hmm. And it's not just healing those those parts, but um, it's like for us, when we do the journey, we uncover things that I wasn't even aware of. Yeah. Yet, now that I know, it's like, oh my gosh, this, 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 and this makes so much sense now. Yes. And why, I, why this and this happened, why I reacted and acted this way, you know, because of this over here, sure. this over there is going on. Yeah, and, and it's just having that that new understanding and that new awareness yep. is huge. 
it's huge. I know you, with your gift, you have helped me so much. And, and you know, it's, it's really nice to have friends who are into this, <laughs> but you could say, it's like, help me. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, you know, so now I live here in North Carolina um, and things have gotten even stronger well and, and here's the thing Let, let's talk about your move real quick because you've lived here in colorado for 17 years yep. for a long time and re really from one day to the next you decided yes. to move to north carolina yep of course here's me cheering you on it's like absolutely if that's and i fully believe if when we feel called to do something and it's really strong, we should follow that calling. Even if it makes zero sense, it's scary as all can be. At the same time, if, if there's a calmness about it in all the chaos and the, and the fear, follow your right. heart, follow your heart. And I, I told Linda when she was like, oh, and this is coming, should I move? Yes, you should definitely move. And <laughs> Was this move not the best thing you, you've done for yourself in a very, very long time? Yes. Yes. Um, and I was really, I was really torn coming here. Right. Um, you know, my besties in Colorado, I'm coming to North Carolina. Your family is here in Colorado. Yeah. And, and, you know, it was very difficult decision to make. But spirit wanted me to make that move. And, you know, I'm not 20 years old and I was pretty settled. Oh, so you're and, 21. You know, <laughs> and, and, and I'm not crazy about change. No, you're not. Mm -mm. And so I said, okay. So I wrote out a list. My ancestors had sent a specific deity, Morrigan, to help me with the move because my ancestors wanted me to go. So I wrote out a list. This is what you have to do to get like a shopping list. The, the honey do list, right? That's right. Folded it up, stuck it on the, the place where she, I had her a little altar type thing for her. And I said, you do that, I'll go. And boom, delivered. Every single one of them and then some. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. And it, it really doesn't matter what your belief system is. It no. really does not matter. Right. The powers that are at work for you mm -hmm. are there for you, for your highest yeah. good. We might not agree with it at the time, but it's always for your highest good. And once you make the decision, Yes. It unfolds so fast. I always laugh because I put out my, my list to the universe is like, yo, listen, I want <laughs> this. this I know. How I do it. <laughs> okay. I write it out. <laughs> right. And then I could, I could feel, see, I, I don't have the gift like Linda does. I don't see or hear. I feel, and I can feel them all laughing. And it's like, okay, good. Here we go. Buckle up. Here it comes. Whoosh. Yeah. And it really all comes. It's like, here you go. Have it all. Have it now figure it out. And oh, by the way, there's more coming. Yeah. It never fails. And I always laugh. I tell people, it's like, I put out an order. I need an X amount of money at a, or more at a certain amount, at a certain time or sooner, you know, and I'm driving or more. Yeah. Sam, my car. So, but it's like once, but you have to make that decision. Yes. And believe it's going to happen. It's not your job to figure out the who's the house, the what's the when's and where's that's a, that is not your job. Your job is to believe you get what you want. Just like when I quit my job. <laughs> yeah, that was like, um, what? <laughs> we talked about it Wednesday night, Thursday morning. I made my decision. I packed up my office. I left. Yep. Friday morning, I sent an email saying, I'm not coming back, folks. Goodbye. Yep. yep. I, I remember had that. no plan. <laughs> I remember that. It was like, I don't want to do this anymore. But you I'm made the decision. 
right? Yeah. And you make the decision, everything has fallen into place since then. Mm -hmm. And it couldn't be any, you couldn't be any happier. Speaking oh, I know. Happy. Since this happiness matters, and we're almost at the end of the show. What does happiness mean to you? How do you define it? And what do you do to add to your happiness? Oh, happiness. What I tell to my customers, my clients, my friends is always follow your heart's passion. Right advice. Because your heart loves you and will always steer you into happiness. When we get into our heads, that's when we're not happy. Oh, but I if love we that. Listen to our heart. We'll always be happy. Mm. And that's, you know, speak your truth. Yep. I love that. And, and, you know, that's happiness to me doing my heart's passion. And it's what I'm doing now. Mm, and you do it so well. And thank you. And I just don't worry about things. Good. So what do you do for fun then? And no work does not count. I don't work. I just have fun. Um, <laughs> and this is, this know, is it. I mean, we're here on this earth in this experience to learn, to grow, and most of all, have fun. Yeah. And, you know, I spend time with my horse, my little chihuahuas, my cat, my, my chicken. Um, I love your chicken. I know, Chicky Poo. Yeah, I have a chicken. Her name is Chicky Poo, and she loves, she's very social. Yes, she is. Uh, very social. And, you know, once the weather turns, I'll be able to go up into the mountains a little bit. Um. There's just so much I sleep in. I, I'm going to start painting again. Oh, nice. I'm going to be making talismans and amulets. Um, so I'll be doing those. And, you know, fun. I read, I play on my computer, I go visit friends. I go out, I have a porch. I have two big porches on my house. I love to go outside and sit on my porch and watch all the animals come in. I love that. That is beautiful. Um, I have a creek that runs through my property. So I can sit outside and listen to the creek. Mm, I love it. And you're very just, connected to earth. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so for me, th that is just you know, no, no, no big city for me. Nice. I love that. Linda, thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me. I hope of somebody course. out there hears a message that helps them. Yeah. And, you know, if somebody wants to talk, feel free to go to my website. And I was just going to say, if people want to get a hold of you, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Yeah. Um, www.heartbeatsoflove2019.com. Nice. Um, I do have the same name on Facebook. You can follow the, the page. I do lives periodically and give out some free mini readings. Mm -hmm. But basically, it's just to give people a taste of what a full session is. I Love it. Linda, thank you so much for being so awesome. Well, for thank being you. a guest on the show for helping Mo get, make his book become a reality. That's now right. We're Next is the movie. movie. <laughs> Next is the movie. <laughs> and he's bugging me. He's like, you're on TV now. Can we do the movie now? Can we do the movie, movie? now? Movie. So, yeah, we're, work we're working on it. It's going to be a cartoon. That's the dream. So we'll <laughs> that'll be fun. Okay. So, hey, anybody out there is interested? contact us we have the book he wants it to be a movie too <laughs> just to raise awareness for the service dog uh community you know and yeah. he's just it's mo we love yes. him yes. linda thank you so much thank you have a here. blessed day thanks you too and hey guys stay tuned we'll be right back after the break with a tip of the week
welcome back. Thanks for hanging around for the tip of the week. And this week it is your time is limited. So don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. You know, just like Linda, she lived her whole life in feeling that she had to hide her gift. Don't do that. Follow your heart. I cannot stress that enough. I think I mentioned that about pretty much every show. <laughs> Follow your heart. Be you. Be authentically you. If it feels right, do it. If it doesn't feel right, don't do it. Follow a different path. Be you. Be authentically you. It's like you have gifts within you. Don't hide them. Don't hide them. Share them. Because you never know who you will be helping, who you'll be impacting you'll be given a gift. Share your gifts. If Linda would not have shared with me her gift, well, guess what? Mo would have never written his book. Yes, my dog wrote a book. It's called Mo the Service Dog because every dog has a purpose. But that would not have happened without Linda's help and without her gift. So you don't know who you'll be helping and, and what might come of it. I mean, my dog wrote a book. Guys, think about that. <laughs> I'm still wrapping my brain around it. So don't hide your gifts. Be who you are meant to be. It's, it's the best way to be. And it's a lot of fun too. So thank you for hanging around, for being you, for coming back and share the show. Share all the other shows that we have on mupotv.com. And, uh, you know, we'll see you again next week. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, remember, be happy. Be kind, be love. Bye.